at the uh, Global Scrum Gathering here in Seattle, and I'm excited to uh, be here with Tamara. And that your last names are again, because <laughs> we just did this a minute ago, and I'm like, how do I pr pronounce the whole last? Well, my new last name is Runyon. So Runyon. Tamara Runyon. Uh, and so if you're watching this and you were with me at the PMI Global Congress in Dublin, you heard me talk about Agile Earned Value when the question was asked, can, can you relate this to Agile Earned Value, Joseph? And I said, um, no. But the people who can are Tamara in a paper that she has written, uh, as well as the AgileEVM.com folks. So go check those people out. And so I'm just excited to be here. I haven't had the chance to have you on the podcast. Um, I was in your session yesterday, and we went over an, an Agile maturity framework. And so I wanted to have you here and, and talk about that with folks, and share a little bit about your thinking and, and what made you come to going, dang, we need this framework. So you can okay. Actually, about. this came out of some work that I was doing to develop new curriculum and ways of working with organizations on um, Agile transformations and how to put this it, how to put this information into a pattern that's easily used, that can be easily socialized, can be updated, is collaborative. And so I used the road mapping techniques and developed five different um, dimensions of practice. And what ties it all together are the value drivers. So at each stage of your transformation, what is it that you're, what is the value you're really trying to get out of this? So for example, in the coordination stage of an agile adoption, for example, an early stage, you may find yourself looking to improve, improve technical practices, in other words, improve quality. Or you may want to be able to respond to change more quickly. Those kinds of things. And so you would then, across these different dimensions of practice, uh, collaboration, technical practices, product management, and organizational culture and environment, start mapping out what are the things that need to be accomplished to help realize this value driver. The next stage then is as you move from collaboration, and you've gotten some energy, you've gotten some success, your organization is now saying, yes, we want to spread this further, but we want to do it in, in a, a cohesive way. And we want to put a little structure around this so that we can make sure that this, this gets done in a way that people can learn and, Im and implement. It's not totally ad hoc. So that would be moving more into the, the process definition phase. And in that phase, you're making certain decisions and you're taking certain actions across the levels of the organization. Say you're doing it this, at a portfolio level within a work group or a business line, an entire business line. So you have multiple teams. So you'd be doing certain things there to decide what this framework of tools, processes, standards um, are, are that these teams will self-organize within. So if you don't have all, each team reinventing the wheel. You have some sort of process for them to follow that they can, that's lightweight enough for them to be able to self-organize. And you may be using Scrum, for example, as your project management framework, which would fall into the collaboration area of practice, as well as Developing different way communication patterns across multiple teams. How are they going to how are they going to work together? And communication across different business lines. Those types of things. All of these things need to be thought about for and and, and work through for a well thought out agile agile transformation. Um, your technical practices at that point, you may you may decide. Well, we really want to encourage our teams to introduce TDD and pair programming. For example, so we're going to develop a, a coaching and training plan for these types of things. Um, and your product management, we need to teach our product management um, on a more widespread scale on how to be a good product owner. What does it take to elicit agile requirements? What does it mean when we say groom your backlog? How tight, high touch does a product owner need to be with their delivery team? What are, do, do our product owners actually sit with our delivery teams, or are they separate and they have office hours? All these different things need to work, be worked out. Obviously, you're not going to be able to work them out to, the, to a, the, de the level of details where you're telling everybody how to do it, but you can set up a framework um, of tried and true practices that work within your environment. And as you work through these, you'll find that you'll be developing an organizational impediments list. What are the things that are getting in the way of the flow of value? Right, okay, um, and then your or so your organizational culture and environment comes into play here, where you're looking at 
here's what we want to change in the organizational culture and environment. We may want to focus first on our HR processes. We're going to write up new job descriptions for these different roles. We're going to map out new career paths, for example. Or with, we're going to work with our accounting department on different capitalization techniques that take advantage of agile practices for which software is huge. capitalization. Which is huge, yeah. absolutely. So these are different things, and the, va you know, the value driver that you identify at the beginning of this, whatever it may be at that point, wh the, the, that, that piece the, of value that the business most wants to realize then tracks everything across these different dimensions down through that. The next phase is strategic alignment, and very often in strategic alignment you will find things like portfolio, product portfolio management. Um, getting aligned with the Agile values and the Agile processes where they learn to actually manage a portfolio so that they are um, they're actually streaming the work at a reasonable pace where they learn to be able to say no to a project that's actually realized enough value and they can stop it. Those that, types that odd, strange word that isn't in the vocabulary of the <laughs> portfolio manager, no. But it needs to be. You, know, <laughs> yeah. you need to know when to stop so that you've actually realized the highest amount of value. You know right. the, old, the old saying that you get 80% of the value from 20% of the work? Well, where is that cutoff right. point? Right. Right? Where, what, what makes the most sense when you have evolving scope, for example? When have we developed enough value? And how does that map to our organizational goals? Are we doing the right things to be able to meet our goals? Mm -hmm. So this, this road map, which is then, it's not, it's not on a small chart like this. I personally am a really big believer in big visible charts. I'd have it across an entire wall in a very visible place nice. in the organization. And I would also have it up on wikis and other ways to, to um, socialize it within your organization. It can be adaptable. You can change things. Well, this isn't going to work here, or this isn't going to work there, or we need to add this. Okay, and then as you have it here, you have a way, or you figure out together, how are we going to implement this? Yeah. And it, it really provides a way to provide for structure for an agile rollout to be able to be replicated across other parts of the organization as well. So you know what you've done. You're doing regular retrospectives on what has worked and what hasn't worked. You're, doing, you're socializing with planning, planning, open planning meetings with different parts of the organization. Here's what we're looking at doing. What are the impacts to you? What do we need to pay attention to? Here's why we need to do it. You're, you're socializing that all with through your... Um, you, with your senior management up there, and you have a way of tracking progress. So, that, I'm so really excited it, about it. Yeah, I think it, this is a, a, a very cool way, well, more than cool, very valuable way for organizations to be able to have to get their hands around what do we need to do. Right. And then in this doing, so in the early in the early stages, and the stages that I'm talking about are the stages of the agile adoption curve. So the first what stage is explore. And in Explore, you then move to Coordinate. And Explore and Coordinate, these are the early, er, early areas, okay? In Zooming in for you. Okay, <laughs> in Exploring, you're, you're t you, have, you have some people who are reading books, they're, they're attending conferences, maybe reading blogs and articles, and they're saying, this, this is cool, maybe we can do this here. And you might have one or two pilot projects. In Coordinate, you've gotten some success and you've gotten some, some atten management attention, and you may have more teams, you know, a few more teams that have gotten, gotten some budget approvals. They're starting to work in this way. You, you may have, you have, generally, you wouldn't have executive sponsorship at this, at this level, particularly, but you would have some small ad hoc budget approvals mm -hmm. to do different things. Executive sponsorship often comes in at the process definition phase. And process definition, which I think I spelled wrong, but process definition phase is where you start to establish that structure. And that's where this roadmap really comes in, this transformation framework. So it, developing structure mm -hmm. around these five dimensions of practice. And so typically what you'll find, you're finding is folks would start using this model that you're developing in that process definition. They would have been kind of doing stuff up to that point, and then they've started to actually go, oh, hey, we need to right. put some structure around right. this and start seeing a framework here. Exactly, and part of the key hey, here we have is company. that this is, organizations that do this, this is all part of the do agile. It's part of doing agile, right. you're doing things. But what, what you need to move to, make this stick, you need to move to be agile. And you, you learn to be agile through doing it, 
through, through doing it th and, and working with the Agile values and principles. And once you come through and you're doing Agile, this I find this is where the switch starts to happen. You go from process def definition to strategic alignment. And then you're aligning your portfolio, you're aligning different different staff type, uh, staff line department, departments like accounting and HR and uh -huh. marketing into what you're doing. And then you're continuing to align and spread these values across the level of the organization that you choose to be agile. Some organizations decide they only want to, they only want to do this agile transformation up at the work group or portfolio level. Other organizations say, no, we want to do this across the entire enterprise. And that's when they come into the transformation. That's where they truly are being agile. And then um, your management practices all start to change throughout here. And just the, the organ there's some organizational culture shift that starts here and, and gets stronger here. Mm -hmm. And then you, uh, your, your culture has shifted in this phase. Really interesting. Uh, so, so much of what I've heard um, this week here talks about transformation as being when your whole organization becomes agile. Yes. Blah, 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 blah. When your whole organization, so this, this is all always leading to your entire organization has to be agile. And, and, and I like your point that, you know, maybe it's not. Maybe the whole organization isn't. And there have been a couple of people who've said that. A couple of the keynote speakers here have said that. And that, that's, that's a point I don't want people to miss because it was said really quickly that that maybe it's not panacea. No, maybe it's not. Um, Jim Highsmith actually has a great paper, paper on adaptive leadership, and he makes this point mm. that you choose at which level in the organization that you want to have this agile transformation, and then you focus. Mm -hmm. um, and what I'm bringing to this is you focus on the value driver, the value that the, that part of the organization gets from it, and then what are the areas that you want to you concentrate on as you're doing them. Right. Resuming out. Yeah, so it, that was that's interesting. It didn't necessarily click yesterday when we were doing the workshop that it that you know maybe this is software development in the IT de department, yeah. or maybe this is the IT department, or maybe this is maybe this is a business line within a bank, right. for example, or an arm of an insurance company, and they're not expecting all of the different business lines to. To but it's but it doesn't have to be the entire organization. It doesn't have to be. Of course, we don't want it to be. Well, <laughs> and, and I think I, I think with within reason, it, it does need some of the agile values need to permeate the, the entire organization in order to incrementally continue to gain more value out of doing agile down at you know in, in a department within right. a division within an enterprise. Right. I agree. And if you, so if you don't, then you don't receive that next step of value. But, I mean, you'll see value from the beginning, right? I mean... I think you'll see value from the beginning. I think this is where it really, truly kicks in. When you start... When you I start should have been saying, from the beginning. Yeah, from the beginning. From the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> when you start purposely um, spreading this out through a, an agile coaching and training plan. Right. You know, and developing your own in-house resources, putting together communities of practice, doing all of these things to help people learn to do Agile and learn to be Agile through doing Agile. The other thing I hear a lot, though, is I hear um, people talking about, well, the company hasn't realized everything they can realize from being Agile. And you know what? That might be okay. It might be that they've already got X amount of performance increase, and they're comfortable with that. Right. you got to wait until there's a, a, enough pain for them to move to the next step. That's true. Yeah, change it. You know, nobody likes to change. Not so all agile implementations have to be pure. Change, well, and and change useful. won't happen until there's enough pain to make it happen. That's true. That's, that's true. That's then true with us that, have something to human help. beings in every, any condition that we are. True. So I, I'm curious. We, when we were in the, the class yesterday, we did this great exercise where we had these beautiful sheets that were uh, printed out, and, and we did this sticky note exercise. Would you actually do that with... With a company like you, you would go in and to a business that says, "All right, we're we're here. We've been we've been doing these things. Tamara, we need your help." We need your help, yeah. So you'd sit down with them and actually go through that same exercise that we did. Uh, very very similar. So we we the first thing I'd advise them to do is to create a leadership team and bring okay. that leadership team together. And then I'd 
I'd ask that we work on assessment first. Let's find out where you are. It's difficult to m map out where you want to be. What's the end result? The acorns, as, as uh, someone said, um, unless you know where you are. So we do an initial, initial agile readiness assessment. What are the practices that are already in place? What are the values that are already here? Right. What are we doing along these different dimensions now? Right. So then we can start to plan how we're gonna how we're gonna change it. And I would have it on a wall. I I have it great big on the wall in a room that we can use and keep it. And I might use sticky notes. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't mean I would only have it on the wall because you know, sticky notes fall down and things like that. Right. But um, that's where I would start having the loose sticky notes get and together. Wiki notes. And we put we put all of it together. Right. Yeah. And we uh, continue to adapt and change. And we bring it out to people and say, here's what we want to do. Let's get you, let's get your feedback. You know, how does this work for you? What do you think is going to happen? We have an organizational impediments list on the wall, as well as in a wiki and other places, that here's, here are the different problems. What are we going to address first and how? How are we going to mitigate these risks, for example? So Excellent. yeah, it's very similar to what we did in class. Good, good. Excellent. So uh, I hope you can see how cool this is. Uh, it, it was really a wonderful exercise yesterday and mm -hmm. lots of aha moments going on with myself and, and the rest of the team that was around the table. And uh, so if you ever get a chance to be in one of these sessions with Tamara, I definitely, definitely recommend it. And how can people get a hold of you if they want to know more about this? Um, you can email me. Um, you can email me, email me at Tamara at AppliedScrum.com. Uh, and there will be, we'll be putting up some web pages and, and putting together some materials around this. Cool. I hope to, I'd like to spread the word. I think it's pretty nice, uh, a nice tool or technique to oh, help, help organizations. Definitely, yeah, I definitely agree, obviously. I <laughs> wanted to have this podcast with you. So, okay. all right, well, thank you for being here. Thank I you love very it. much. It's great. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.